Hello and welcome back. Now if you're watching this video then I'm assuming you're making a game for Android or at least you're interested to. So for that I've decided that I'm going to show you this method even though I will not be able to integrate it into my tutorial series which is what it was intentionally uh, thought up for. Uh, but I decided what the hell this is very important people should know if they don't already. And I, um, well, I decided why not show them. So I have this simple, well it's not that simple actually, it's quite a complex scene setup. It's from uh, Quantum Coder QC over on the forum for Armory 3D. He provided me with this uh, endless runner setup that you can go check out. I'll put, uh, provide a link in the description below. And uh, well, now that's out of the way, we can see that we have a bunch of controls over here in the player movement. We have on update our character that moves forwards using the transform object. Now again if you haven't seen my tutorial series you should probably go watch it, at least the first few episodes to get used to these nodes because we mess with the transform and the on updates quite a bit as well as the um, controls. So I'm going to show you how you can make this object move from left to right by touching the screen. Uh, the left side of the screen will make it obviously turn on the left. Uh, and the right side on the right. So as you can see we have the input method here. We have the keyboard that controls um, the A that controls the object going on the um, left side and the right uh, as in the right hand side is controlled by D. Now I just duplicated these two values here, brought them down here and changed the input method of the keyboard to left arrow key and right arrow key so it gives the players a choice. Now over here we are we are going to in integrate it to a mobile device. Now since mobile devices don't usually have the virtual keyboard enabled in a game, we are going to set an input method as I said by touching one side of the screen or another. Now to do this in the UI, um, can we need to make a new UI, a new canvas. So go to the scene editor, scene property panel I mean, create a new UI a UI canvas and create, uh, create it by clicking OK. Make a new one. We can set the default name and click OK. Now we can click Edit to open it up. Now our Armory's uh, canvas editor is a little complex for newcomers. It took me a little while to get used to it so I'm going to show you step by step. We're going to add a button by just clicking on it. By default it pins it to the top left hand side corner so we can just drag it and set it to about half the size of the screen. Now as you can see it's well it'll be overlaying our game if we leave it like this so we are going to go down to the color section set the background color here by clicking on it it comes up with this uh, wheel so we can change the color but what is interesting here is we have an alpha value and it's set to 1 but if we drag this slider down as you can see it removes that alpha so now it's transparent unless we hover over it in that case it is no longer transparent so on the hover do the same step and bring the alpha all the way down and now the only problem we have is when we click on pressed we need to set that alpha all the way down as well and now we don't have any problem but we do still have the text over here so we can set the default text uh, to z nothing and delete it now we have the name over here which we have to pay great attention to because it's very important that you remember it. So we're going to call it left. And now what we're going to do is we are going to save because that's very important. And we're going to press shift D. So it's duplicated our button and it's saved the, uh, the properties here so we don't need to redo all that. Although it is um, offset slightly by default so we can know that it's been duplicated. So we can reset that offset by zeroing out the X and Y values. And with that done we can actually just close these properties and these color. All that is interesting now is the anchor. Oh and hang on. We're going to have to rename this one. If not we won't recognize it from the other left over here. Two lefts which isn't ideal. So we're going to call it right. I guess that's a misspelt that. Ah, I can't see. Right. So, right. Right then. 
right left ha <laughs> funny so we are going to set the left anchor to the left side so go to the anchor and we're going to anchor it to the left and now we select the right the right button and anchor it to the right so now we have two different buttons that separate the screen and we're going to use them as triggers to trigger an event and this event will be moving our player so once again I urge you to press the save button and we are going to exit out of the canvas editor and in the player movement um, trait we are going to set up a new movement so what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate these two actions as in the move left and move right by pressing shift D and we're going to move them down now instead of duplicating uh, the whole thing like previously with the keyboard inputs because the keyboard inputs all you have to click was change here instead we are going to add a new input instead of keyboard we're going to add an on canvas now to find this go into the canvas and search for the only on as you can see we have a bunch of set here and we have a bunch of get but here is the only one that starts with on so it's you know not very hard to find so you press the on canvas element and we're going to plug it directly into the translate object now this is going to translate it on the left as you can see it's minus 5 minus 0 0.5 I mean so we're going to call it left this is where the naming comes in handy that I said left is uh, referring to referring to the left button that we added and as you can see we can go through these values we have a click as in when it's pressed not hovered because in the our case we don't want to hover over our screen with our finger now in the start status we're going to have to change this because it's not when the screen is started it's when your finger is pressed down on it and as long as your finger is pressed down on the screen you're going to constantly repeat this action as in moving it zero, minus 0 0.5 and also uh, we can set the left middle or right the mouse button but in our case we want to export it as an Android game uh, so this mouse button won't be very useful for that although it's useful for testing purposes when we are going to run it and now that we've changed some of these values we can actually duplicate it same principle we don't want to redo everything so we can duplicate it after we finish doing the adjustment and we are going to plug it into the right hand side so all we need to do now is to just change the name to right and that is referring to the right button that we created in the canvas now all we have to do is to save the project by clicking ctrl s by pressing ctrl s we're going to clean the project and I'm going to run it to make sure everything is working and normally as you can see when we left click on the left hand side and or on the right hand side it's going to move and as you can see by long click on the left or on the right it's moving the object now currently there's no collision set up so there's no limitations to where this can run uh, run move but if you add a physics object and set it invisible then it will act as a wall for this project but that is a tutorial for another day. So thank you very much for watching. Yet again, I urge you to go check out the Quantum Coder QC uh, link in the description because he provides this awesome blend file. Uh, it only has a few problems with obviously the removing of the blocks, which is delayed. But other than that, it's really cool. Now, before I leave you, a quick note. I have my game jam that has just recently started as of publishing this video to YouTube. So if you haven't already, you should definitely go check it out and definitely uh, participate. All the rules and everything is already on the Game Jam page, but if you want, you can go check out my videos for ideas and uh, further um, explanations of what it is for and why you would want to participate. So that's it for me. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you liked. I hope you liked the video, and hope you would subscribe. And don't check out my tutorial series for our move 3D for to total beginners. Thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day.